I work on the Far East and Curlew project and the project is really about understanding how this critically endangered migratory shorebird uses habitat in Darwin Harbour. Darwin Harbour is an interesting site because we've got pretty much pristine environment, mangrove environment, but we've also got some industrial areas where the bird has been recorded, such as um, the Darwin Port East Arm Wharf site. And this is an interesting site because it's purely artificial, uh, all reclaimed land, but we've got almost 1% of the world's population in these ponds. And what we're looking at is how the birds use these ponds and how the birds move away from Darwin Port to other areas in Darwin Harbour. So the Charles Darwin National Park, mud flats and the salt pans, and it also uses mangrove areas. And what we've been doing is tracking birds. So that involves catching the shorebirds using a variety of methods. And we catch them and put GPS tags on their backs and we track their movements all around Darwin Harbour throughout the tide cycle. So low tide and high tide and through the night and we also just see how they're behaving, what's driving their movement in the harbour so that we can learn to manage them. The collaboration with the Larrakia Rangers has been really important to our project because it means that we get more people out on the sea more of the time. Um, we've started this project with Amanda Lillyman collecting some baseline data of salt pen, um, microclimates, some of the soil temperatures and just overall surveying some of the sites around Darwin. We record all types of data we see on the beach here. So it could include the humidity when we're out there, the tides height, fauna observations, so both marine and terrestrial animals, public interaction if we get the chance, so talking to fishermen and, and recreational disturbances, so tire tracks on the beach, we record the data, put waypoints there, location where we've seen it. More recently on the Curlew project, I've done a bit of data entry, which was looking at videos and monitoring the birds foraging at different locations. It involved watching their behaviours and putting in certain things they were doing at different times, just to see their foraging rates. We do some boat work, doing a looking for the Far Eastern Curly, and that just consists of a couple of transect lines and whatever we see on the lines, we record it down. So I enjoy doing this project because you get to find the Eastern Far Eastern Coolers, which are endangered, and being out in the water. Not only do we do the curly stuff, but it also gets us out onto the water looking at multitudes of other things as well. So um, fisheries compliance, dolphin research, uh, dugong research. Um, it's just extra eyes and ears out on country. The Far East and Curlew is critically endangered under Australian uh, environmental legislation. Globally, it's listed as an endangered species under IUCN Red List. And that's because the population has dropped over many generations because of things like habitat destruction in areas where they migrate through the Yellow Sea and in Eastern Asia. They're also facing hunting across their um, breeding and staging sites. And then here in Australia, they also face threats such as disturbances and coastal development. So we've got a few things to manage here in Australia on the non-breeding grounds. The best thing to do to help shorebirds that anybody can do is to give the birds some space, particularly the Far Eastern Curlew. Being our largest migratory shorebird in Australia, it can spot danger the furthest away. So it will actually start to fly away at a couple of hundred metres from you. So it doesn't like you to get too close and the best thing is to, to keep some distance. When a dog or a person disturbs a curlew or other shorebirds on the beach, it means that that bird is missing out on time to feed and time to rest. And when that happens all day long, it means that that bird will be in a worse state for its migration.